of course. As soon, as soon as I start to do a video, the damn alarm goes off. Anyways, what up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Wanted to drop a little video here. Kind of what's been going on behind the scenes. Haven't really talked about. Last video you saw, we had Troy's car out. Um, been kind of tinkering with it, getting some track time with it. I think we finally got the second gear issue sorted out with it. So now we can start making some progress with that car. We had the Mustang out. We've had the Boost Knuckle out. I don't know, a few weeks ago, I decided on a whim to sell one of the cars. I have entirely way too many projects. It's really hard to build and maintain this many project, as many projects as I have. And I kind of feel like I can do it uh, most days, but then there's some days, you know, between work, uh, working in the garage at home, building engines, building cars, family, life. Um, it just gets pretty tiresome. So somebody made a post here a while back on Facebook looking for a car. Uh, kind of said what they wanted so I posted a picture of one of my cars guy messaged me said he wanted it uh, we worked out a price and <clears throat> ended up he wanted me to deliver it and I was delivering across the state and uh, we'll show you which car that is man it's hot it's hot outside and I'm out here in the sun doing something I'm probably gonna regret you guys might not enjoy this but we got the budget car loaded up on the trailer and currently it's getting loaded up and headed across the state from Kansas City to St. Louis. Uh, the car's getting purchased this afternoon. Some guy out there is wanting a, you know, a badass little street car and he posted something up on Facebook and uh, I just posted a picture just kind of on a whim to see if maybe he'd be interested in it. And I actually had like five people message me and, uh, really seem interested in the car and we talked a little bit we came to a price on it and we're selling it he didn't have a way to get it to st louis so i'm trailing right there hopefully he uh enjoys the car i can't wait to see what it happens whenever it gets on the dyno they're gonna tune it and stuff they're in can or they're in st louis so uh i'd be really curious to see what they get out of it power wise. Um, I think this setup will make 500 very easily. So either way, it's going to be fun. But uh, if I would have tuned it on the dyno and got it to make 500, it probably would have turned into another race car. And as you all know, I don't need another race car. It sucks. I built this car for a purpose. I kind of met the goal already that I wanted to run with it as far as at the track. Sometimes things just pop up. You just got to gotta let go of them and this is one of them but we're gonna hop in the truck i'm gonna get it strapped down and uh, we're gonna hit the road take it out there and see if he likes it hopefully he buys it and uh i guess we'll see you guys when we get there got her dropped off money in hand goodbye old girl i wasn't intending on getting rid of that car actually anytime soon if ever uh mainly because i didn't have a whole lot of money wrapped up in it uh, it was more time than anything. Obviously, time is money. But as far as the dollar amount, I didn't have a whole lot of money wrapped up in that car, which was kind of the whole uh, game plan behind that build. So the op opportunity came up to get rid of it. So I said, the hell with it. I'm just going to part ways with it. And that would give me one less car I got to license, one less car I got to insure, and then one less car I have to maintain and try and make videos of. Um, so it just, it just fit, uh, you know, if something else had come up with one of the other cars and somebody had to have something that I already had, I would have sold one of the other ones, but that one just fit the bill for what somebody was looking for. And I was willing to part ways with it. So 
got rid of that. And that gave me a little bit of money in my pocket. And that gave me some money to put into some of the other builds. We got stuff coming up for pretty much everything. <laughs> At least all the other cars. I, which I haven't posted videos of this, but I took the BK out here a couple weeks ago as well and worked on trying to get my license passes done. six total passes you have to make for your NHRA license and I only made four. The last two I need to make are full passes. Well, in the process of that, the truck decided it wanted to have a noise in the transmission. So the transmission has a little tick that I'm, un I'm unsure what it is. I don't know. So I got to sort that out in order to make my last two passes because the passes have to be in the truck. Um, if I want to go to say the Mustang and make license passes in it, I have to start over and make all six passes in a different vehicle. The truck chassis had to be certified in order to make NHRA passes. So I got the truck, the Mustang, and the Silver Civic. All the, all the cages certified last week, so everything was good. I knew that I needed to turn the truck up a little bit because I couldn't get it to 60 foot like I wanted to that day to run the nine on minimal amounts of boost for the last two passes for cert. So I tried to turn it up once and it was pushing water. So now I have a transmission issue and a coolant pressure issue that I have to sort out with that truck. And I have to do it in a timely manner to be able to make my last two passes. This is all where the money from the budget car is going in to helping other cars become better. But that leads me to the silver car, AKA the red car. That car has been sitting for a few years now. We took it to PFI there a couple years ago. I'll put a link in of his video and then I'll put a link in of our video as well. Um, when we went up there, got the car on the dyno, did some testing, uh, made a bunch of power, and uh, it's just been sitting. Broke the transmission, broke an axle. I got all that fixed. Pretty much just set since then. I'm going to throw in a couple clips here, kind of what's been going on with that and where we're Out headed. in the garage and uh, got some packages in the mail We've got today. The, uh, the old red car here, as we call it, the silver car now. Um, haven't done anything with this car in a couple years, pretty much ever since we took it to PFI. Um, I believe it was 2020. I've been acquiring some parts here and there. Um, when we had it on the dyno, you know, it made a bunch of power. I didn't really care how much power it did or didn't make. You know, I've had the car, um, honestly, like really shows my age besides, you know, this mug here. Um, I've had this car almost 20 years. I think, uh, well, you're, yeah, no, I've had it 20 years now. It's 2023. I've had that car since 2003. I was a senior in high school, and that's how long I've had this car. I don't really care how fast it is anymore. Um, I tried really hard to chase guys that own their own shops and stuff and really tried to race without my, like outside of my means. Um, I spent a bunch of money on it, obviously, um, over the years. And then it just got to be too much of a headache. And then I went to MoTeC, also more of a headache. I couldn't get people to tune it. I didn't understand it. I didn't know how to work my way around the software. So with that, we have some pots. Um, this was the first thing I ordered. Um, I hit up the guys at Boomslang. Boomslang is actually local here in Missouri. And I told them pretty much what I had, what I was trying to do. Um, I was ditching the MoTeC, but I didn't want to have to buy a new harness sell my other harness out of the car because it was made for the car um you know made the way i wanted it so it might not necessarily be what somebody else wants so i hit them up and was like hey is there any way you can make me like a jumper to go from the motec stuff to a fuel tech and they did um i sent them a pin out and a diagram of 
my Motec harness. And they made me this. This was pretty pricey. I think this thing ended up costing me like 800 bucks for this little harness here. But I was going to lose more than that on selling my harness. So it just made sense. If I was going to have to buy a harness and then lose money on the one I currently had, this was kind of the, the best case scenario. So got that. And then we acquired um, a fuel tech system here from the guys at PFI, Jamie and Brent kind of pushed me towards this. We had um, FT550 on Troy's all motor car. Um, I'm actually pretty fond of it and it's very user friendly. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna put it on this car. That way I don't have to rely on people all the time. Um, obviously I'm gonna have to rely on somebody to tune the car, but outside of that, I should be able to make changes and stuff on my own. And that's gonna make it really easy on me because I like to do everything by myself. Um, with that being said, we got all that stuff, like I said, from PFI Speed, the FT550, the Nano. Um, and then we actually, last time Brent and Jamie and them were here, they took the shifter out of the car and sent that to, uh, actually they took it and dropped it off with the guys at Fuel Tech, And we put a strain on that shifter. So now we have a strain gauge. And uh, I got some more stuff in the mail today from Steve Delacruz um, over at Delacruz Motorsports or Almazar. This is his new line of products he's got. Um, we picked up a rear speed sensor because currently the speed sensor is actually just reading off the back of the lug nuts on the rear. And that's not enough resolution. So we're going to read off the ABS ring on the back of the hub. So that's what this is for. This is going to let us put our Hall Effect sensor and read from the, uh, the ABS ring. And then we got his dash mount that's going to mount to the stock column. And then we can put the 550 and the Nano all in one place. And then this is a boost control, uh, boost controller mount that I picked up for the budget car because we're going to put boost control on the budget car too. But that's pretty much everything we got going for the car. So I'm going to get all this stuff taken apart. We're going to start putting it in the car piece by piece and uh, see if we can get this thing running with the help of the guys from PFI Speed. So we got a FuelTech FT550 for the car um strain gauge nano all that stuff we got from pfi speed jamie and brent uh, got me set up with all that stuff and then we got a couple other pieces picked up a set of uh, ks tune rear trailing arms for the car i actually been working on trying to get those installed i should probably be videoing a lot of that um but there's honestly there's just days where i just don't want to go out and pick up the camera you know if i had somebody videoing for me it would be different but when it's you you're doing the work you're doing the video and you're doing the editing it just it gets honestly it gets tiresome and uh one of these days i'll, I'll be better about it um maybe whenever i get an extra set of hands to help me with this kind of stuff and the channel starts to grow and then we can move forward with some of that uh progression for the channel but trailing arms um it's getting fuel tech. I've been working on getting that wired up so we can get the car running. I'm waiting on Jamie to send me a base file to be able to get the car fired up. That car, honestly, is pretty stressful. Every time the car goes out, at least in the last 10 years, you know, the progression the car's had in the last 10 years, it always cost me a lot of money. So traveling to race it is pretty, uh, pretty nerve wracking, but that car is going to get some track time very soon, which is why we're working on it. The goal is to take this car to the last PSCA race on the mountain this year. So I've only got a few weeks to get this going. And uh, I've been kind of, like I said, slacking on the video. So I was going to throw this video together, kind of give you a rundown of everything that's going on. My goal with this car is to break the cage cert. I don't know if it's going to do it. Cause I'm going to, there's a couple other things I'm going to change and test with this car that I know probably won't do it with, but my goal is with this car is to break the chassis cert. I don't know that I would ever try and put like a 25, five cage in it. Um, I mean, I guess time will tell who knows. I've said that about a lot of cars. I always said this car would never be that fast. I always said the BK was never going to be as fast as it is. Um, so who knows? You, you, I just never know, you know, time will tell. 
and then I get a wild hair in my ass and decide I'm gonna do something and I just I just do it but I'm pumped to bring you guys along in this uh, journey of bringing the red car back to life and actually trying to get it back out this car was my pride and joy for many many years and that got to a point where it was so expensive and really hard to maintain and I was much younger then, um, made a lot less money then, so it was a lot harder to maintain the car. And over the last probably five to eight years, I've kind of lost sight of the car and kind of lost my, my motivation for the car, honestly. And a lot of it's just because everything for that car is so expensive. So like I said, I've got some things I'm gonna change on it. Um, may hurt it, it may make less power with these changes. It may not go as fast as I intend on going with these changes, but it's going to give me something to focus on to, to meet a new goal, to try something else, um, to maybe relight that fire for this car and relight um, my uh, desire to, you know, to, to try things and do other things, whatever. But so, yeah, that car is coming back out and um the white budget car videos did pretty good a lot of people like that stuff so that's kind of this the red car is going to come back it's going to kind of take over the white car spot it's not going to be as budget as a white car but i i think i'm going to try and step it back a little bit and try and make it a little bit more budget oriented so people can see that you can have one of these cool cars sport front wheel drive style cars and not have to spend you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars on an engine five thousand dollars on a turbo and all this stuff but i guess we'll just see we'll just have to we'll test some parts out see what happens and see how cheap we can make it and how fast we can make it go on you know minimal amounts of money but anyways that's gonna do it for this video guys thanks for watching keep following don't forget comment like subscribe we'll see you on the next one